One of the most common complaints about the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been its lack of compelling villains. With a few exceptions, most MCU movies feature a one-dimensional bad guy who wants to destroy the world for reasons that don't really matter. However, there's one corner of the MCU rich with compelling and sympathetic villains, the Netflix shows. Wilson Fisk, Mariah Dillard, Kilgrave, Cottonmouth, Shades, Wesley, the list of interesting antagonists goes on. But one name you probably won't hear mentioned in a discussion of Marvel's best villains is Harold Meacham, the primary antagonist of Iron Fist. Hello, Danny. Now, that's not to say that Meacham is a bad villain. He wasn't campy to the point of being ridiculous like Diamondback. Bye, Felicia. Nor was he completely forgettable like Malekith. Thanks to a great performance by David Wenham, Harold had some truly intimidating scenes. But it's precisely because of those scenes that Meacham is such a disappointment. While the version we got was fine, Harold Meacham had the potential to stand among the other great villains of the MCU. I am so, so sorry, Ward. And that potential was wasted by poor writing and countless missed opportunities. On paper, Harold Meacham has a lot in common with Wilson Fisk, arguably Marvel's best villain to date. Both are reclusive businessmen who grew up in abusive households, both have ties to the hand, both have conflicts with the heroes, not just because of their vigilantism, but because of what they do in their day jobs. They're both played by excellent actors giving great performances, and both bring with them a constant sense of dread, as if they could snap and commit a horrible act of violence at any second. But Harold Meacham lacks something that Fisk and other great Netflix villains have in spades. Humanity. Am I a monster, Ward? Yes. Definitely. See, while Fisk might be a terrible person capable of despicable things, he's humanized by the things he cares about. His mother, Wesley, Vanessa, Hell's Kitchen itself. Likewise with Cottonmouth and Mariah Dillard, who care about each other and their reputations and preserving their idea of Harlem. Even Kilgrave, as disturbing as it is, genuinely cares for Jessica Jones. But Harold has no such attachments. He claims to care about his children, but routinely manipulates and abuses them when they stop following orders. Ward, I invested my life into you to raise you to be a great man. You've been the biggest disappointment of my life. Joy, I apologize for choosing Ward over you. It was a mistake. Never trust him again. To be clear, I'm not saying that the fact that Harold's a bad father makes him a bad character. But there has to be something that Harold genuinely cares about in order for the audience to relate to him. And on paper, there are plenty of things Harold should care about. His kids, the memory of his wife, his company, his former best friend and partner, who he killed. And occasionally, there are moments that suggest Harold might actually care about some of these things. Like when he leaves his penthouse just to kill the triad member that attacked Joy. But Harold remains so emotionless and inscrutable during that entire exchange, it's pretty much impossible to tell if he was seeking revenge for his beloved daughter, or if he was just looking for an excuse to kill. I know what some of you may be thinking, that Harold's lack of humanity wasn't the result of bad writing. It was because the hand's resurrection process turned him into a monster. The show even tells us as much, which is exactly the problem. Ever since he came back from the dead, it's like a, it's like a piece of his soul got left in the grave. One of the most basic rules of writing is show, don't tell. In other words, action is often a far more interesting tool for exposition than dialogue. It's a very simple rule, but it's one that Iron Fist manages to break a lot. What or uh, who is Shao Lao? The dragon. <sighs> While Harold might have been a loving father who really cared for his kids before his first death, the audience never gets a chance to see that version of him. We never see him sick in bed, terrified of death. We never see him act selflessly to protect his children. So, for the audience, it's impossible to feel the loss of Harold's humanity because we're never given any direct evidence that it was there in the first place. In each of the other Netflix shows, there's an entire episode mostly dedicated to revealing the villain's backstory. For each character, we see the moment where they lose their innocence and begin down a path towards becoming a villain. Harold never gets this episode. 
In fact, the audience never sees the story from his perspective at all. We only ever see his actions through the eyes of others. So while the effects of Wilson Fisk's abusive father are apparent in everything he does, Harold's father is mentioned in a throwaway line. You know what my dad used to do? Whenever I messed up, which, according to my dad, was pretty much all the time, he'd whip me across the back with his belt. In Luke Cage, we see Cottonmouth agonize over his decision to kill his uncle, and we feel for him as he makes an impossible choice. Did Harold ever feel any guilt about killing his business partner and best friend? We don't know. Harold's backstory, his fear of death, his decision to save his children from becoming orphans, it's all just as tragic and sympathetic as what happened to Fisk and Cottonmouth. We just never get to actually see any of it. There's a scene in the first season of Daredevil that, to me, cements Wilson Fisk as the MCU's best villain. A scene so memorable, I probably don't even have to name it for you to know what I'm talking about. Fisk crushing Anatoly's head in the door of his SUV is unexpected and violent and brutal, but it's also a display of dozens of complex emotions that Fisk is feeling. Yes, he's angry, but he's also embarrassed and insecure and ashamed of what Vanessa might think of him. Compare that scene to a very similar moment in Iron Fist, when Harold kills his assistant Kyle with an ice cream scoop. I'm sorry. While both scenes build a feeling of dread and suspense in the minutes leading up to the killing, the payoff of the two could not be more different. The car door scene is sickening, forcing the audience to feel what Fisk feels as he momentarily loses control. Meanwhile, Kyle's death is almost played as a joke, with Harold snapping over Kyle asking for vanilla ice cream, and at one point muttering, Oh, shut up and die! feeling nothing but mild annoyance at how long Kyle's death is taking. The scene accomplishes its goal of reminding the audience of Harold's violence and instability, but it's definitely not the kind of scene that people will still talk about years after the show's release. When you strip away a villain's humanity, you're basically left with a monster. And monsters can be scary and exciting. They can provide thrilling challenges for the hero to overcome. But a threatening monster and an interesting character aren't the same thing. And Harold Meacham is a pretty good monster. Oh, Danny boy. But if the writers had bothered to show us his vulnerability and humanity, he could have been a great villain. <laughs>